Hello everyone. Today we start chapter four on computer system architecture course. Chapters one, two, and three are a comprehensive revision of the digital design course. Topics covered in this chapter are register transfer and micro operations, register transfer language, register transfer, bus and memory transfers, arithmetic micro operations, logic micro operations, shift micro operations, arithmetic logic unit, and hardware description language. First, we start with the register transfer language. As you know, the internal hardware organization of a digital computer is best defined by specifying the set of registers it contains and their function, the sequence of micro operations performed on the binary information stored in the registers, and the control that initiates the sequence of micro operations. The symbolic notation used to describe the micro operation transfers among registers is called a register transfer language. A register transfer language is a system for expressing in symbolic form the micro operation sequences among the registers of a digital module. It's a convenient tool for describing the internal organization of digital computers in a precise manner. It can also be used to facilitate the design process of digital systems. Computer registers are designated by capital letters. For example, R1, R2, address register, memory buffer register, program counter, etc. The individual flip-flops in an input register are numbered in sequence from zero through in minus one. This is the numbering in a byte register, or we can number directly from zero to 15. This is flip-flop zero, flip-flop one, flip-flop 15. Or even we can partition the register. For example, the program counter is partitions into low part and high part. Information transfer from one register to another is designated in symbolic form by means of a replacement operator. This statement denotes a transfer of the contents of register R1 into register R2. The contents of register R1 are unchanged while we lose the contents of register R2. They are replaced by the contents of register R1. So the contents of the two registers after the replacement are the same. Normally, we want the transfer to occur only under a predetermined control condition. For example, we want the transfer from register R1 to R2 to occur only if the condition is true or the control signal B equals to one. A control function is a Boolean variable that is equals to one or zero. The control function is included in the statement as follows. A Boolean function can be expression as well. For example, we want to transfer register R1 to register R3 if the condition X, Y is true. Every statement written in a register transfer notation implies a hardware construction for implementing the transfer. This is the hardware implementation for the transfer from register R1 to R2 if the condition B is true. To transfer the contents of R1 into R2, the control unit should generate the control condition or the control signal B which is connected to the load input of R2. In this case, during the positive or rising edge clock pulse, the contents of register R1 are loaded into register R2. Note in the timing diagram, although we have the load one here, but the transfer will occur only on the positive edge of the clock pulse. 
basic symbols for register transfers, letters and numerals denote a register, for example, memory address register, register R2, parentheses denote a part of a register, for example, here the low order part of register R2 is concerned, we write R2027. A row denotes transfer of information and a comma is used to separate two or more operations that are executed at the same time. The statement denotes an operation that exchanges the contents of two registers during one common clock pulse, provided that the control function or condition is true. Next, bus and memory transfers. A typical digital computer has many registers and paths must be provided to transfer information from one register to another. The number of wires will be large if separate lines are used between each register and all other registers in the system. A more efficient scheme for transferring information between registers in a multiple register configuration is a common bus system. A bus structure consists of a set of common lines, one for each bit of a register, through which binary information is transferred one at a time. Control signals determine which register is selected by the bus during each particular register transfer. There are different ways for constructing the bus. For example, using multiplexers or using a three-state devices. The multiplexers select the source register whose binary information is then placed on the bus. Here we have a bus system for four registers. Register A, B, C, and D. Since the size of each register is four, then we need four multiplexers. In general, if we have k registers, each of size n, then the number of multiplexers equals to n, which is the size of the register, and the size of the max must be k by one. k is the number of registers. In this configuration, we have four multiplexers, each of size four by one. Since the size of the multiplexer is four by one, we need to select lines. The select lines are applied to all multiplexers. On zero, zero select, the zero input of each box is transferred to the bus. On zero, zero, the contents of register A here will be transferred to the bus. Here is the function table. On zero, one, the first input of the max is transferred to the bus. Here we have B0, B1, B2, and B3. So the contents of register B are transferred into the bus. So if we need to load the contents of register D into the bus, the control unit should apply the signal 1-1 to the select, then the contents of register D are loaded into the bus. The symbolic statement for a bus transfer may mention the bus here. The content of register C is placed on the bus and the content of the bus is loaded into R1 by activating its load control input. Or its presence may be implied in the statement. For example, you can directly write here C to R1. From this statement, the designer knows which control signals must be activated to produce the transfer through the bus. The bus can be constructed using a three-state buffer. Here is the graphic symbol for three-state buffer. 
it has normal input and unlike all logic gates it has a control input the output y equals to the normal input if the control input is one or it will be in the high impedance if the control is zero so the control input determines the output state when the control input equals to one the output is enabled and the gate behaves like a buffer with the output equals to the normal input when the control input is zero the output is disabled and the gate goes to high impedance state regardless of the value in the normal input the high impedance state of a three state gate provides a special feature not available in other gates because of this feature a large number of the state gate outputs can be connected with wires to form a common bus line without endangering loading effects to construct a common bus for four registers of n bits each using three state buffers we need n circuits with four buffers in each as shown in this figure here we have one bus line with the three state buffers on enable if the select is zero zero then this output of the decoder is one and it is here one so a zero will be transferred to the bus line the control input to all other three state buffers is zero and for example on enable one and the select one one then this control is equals to one allowing d0 to be transferred to the bus line note again that here we have zero and here zero and here zero so these three state elements will not allow this to be transferred to the output here we have the circuit for one bit only if the size of the register is n then we need n such circuits next memory transfer here is the general structure of a ram the address is usually applied to the address register this is the ram locations and here we have a memory buffer register the controller generates the read or write control zero or one zero for example for read and one for write the transfer of information from a memory location to the outside environment is called read and the transfer of a new information to be stored into memory location is called a write operation in both cases the address of the memory location should be specified so in read operation we apply the address and the read control the contents of the location is read and transferred to the output while in the write operation the address of the location is specified the write control and the input data is stored into the address memory location the read operation can be stated as follows read memory location addressed by the address register is transferred to memory buffer register here the square brackets denote the contents of the location so this statement means that the memory location addressed by the address register is transferred to memory buffer register or for example the memory location addressed by address register is transferred to register one and the write operation can be stated as follows right here the memory location is destination the contents of the memory buffer register is transferred or stored into the memory location addressed by the memory address register if we need to store the contents of register r2 
into the memory location address by memory address register, then we write it as follows, R2. In the textbook, the data register is used instead of memory buffer register. Next, arithmetic micro operations. The basic arithmetic operation is addition. For example, this statement as the contents of register R2 and register R3 and store the result in register R1. And this statement subtracts R2 from R1 and stores the result in R1, for example. To find the complement of register R1 and store it into register R2, we can write the statement under the control function B. This is the once complement. And to find the twos complement of register R1, we find the once complement plus one, and we may store it in register R2 or even in register R1. This is the twos complement. We can use the twos complement for subtraction, for example, to find the contents of R1 minus R2. We can add the contents of R1 to the twos complement of R2 and store the result, for example, in register R1. This is equivalent to subtraction R1 minus R2. For increment operation, for example, increment R1, we can store the result in R1 as well. And we can decrement the contents of register R1, decrement, and store it in either register R1 or, for example, R2 under the control function B. This is the symbolic designation of some arithmetic micro operations. Next, some hardware circuits used to implement the arithmetic micro operations. First, binary adder. An n-bit binary adder requires n full adders. Here we have a four-bit binary adder. So we need four full adders. To the first full adder, we apply a zero B zero and the carry N to generate is zero. The carry out is applied to the next full adder along with A1, B1, and the last carry is the carry out. The end data bits for the A inputs come from one register, for example, R1, and the end data bits for the B inputs come from another register, for example, R2, and the sum can be transferred to a third register, R3, or to one of the source registers. For example, if we need to store the sum in R1, then R1 is added to R2, and we store the sum in R1, replacing its old contents. Here we lose the old contents of R1, and the sum of R1 and R2 is stored in R1. Next, binary adder subtractor. Here is a four-bit adder subtractor. We need four full adders. We apply the bits of A to the inputs of the full adders here. And to the second input of the full adder, we apply B0 exclusive or the M control signal. And the carries are connected as in a usual binary parallel adder. Here, if the control signal is zero, then at the output of the exclusive OR gate, we will have B0 exclusive OR zero, which is B0. Then at the output, we'll have A0 added with B0, A1, B1, etc. And this is the add operation. However, if the control signal M is one, here we'll have B0 exclusive or one, B1 exclusive or one, and the input carry is one. And you know that A added to the two's complement of B is equivalent to A minus B. So if the control signal M is one, then at the output of the circuit will have A minus B. In this way, the circuit generates 
either the sum of the operands a b if the control signal is at zero or the difference a minus b if the control is one meaning subtract next binary incremental the increment macro operation adds one to a number in a register this is the increment macro operation it can be implemented using a cascade of five adders with an input carry equals to one. For example, if a four bit register has the binary value 0, 1, 1, 0, then after the increment macro operation will have 1, 1, 1, 0. The result after the increment macro operation can be stored in the same register or in another register. For example, we can increment R1 and store the result in R2 or in R1. Next, arithmetic circuit. Here is an arithmetic circuit that performs different micro operations depending on the control signals S1, S0, and on the carry. In this four bit stage circuit, we have four full adders. We apply the bits from the first operand to the inputs of these full adders. We have four multiplexers of size four by one. The select lines S1, S0 are applied to the multiplexers. Next, we apply to the inputs of the multiplexers, either B0 or not B0, the logic zero or the logic one to obtain the arithmetic circuit according to the following function table. For example, on zero, zero select, here are the, the two cases. If the carry N is zero, here the carry N is zero, and zero, zero select, so this input of the max is transferred to the output, and this input comes from B i, B zero, B one, B two, B three. So the output generated here equals the sum of A and B. This is the add micro operation. And if the input carry is one and the select is zero zero, here one and here from B0. This is the add with carry operation. On 0, 1 select, this input is transferred to the output of the max. And this input comes from not B. Here we have not B3, not B2, not B1, not B0. If carry N is 0, then we'll have A added with the ones complement of B, which is subtract with borrow. If, however, the input carry is one, here we'll have one, which is A added with the two's complement of B, which is subtract A minus B. Here the case. Next, on one zero select, here the output, the max comes from one zero. And here we have logic zero. If carry n equals zero, then a is added with all zeros, which is the transfer macro operation. If, however, carry n equals one, then we'll have A added with one, which is the increment macro operation. And if select lines are one, one here, and here from logic one, so we'll have here all ones. If the carry N is zero, then A added with all ones, is a minus one decrement micro operation. Usually I have questions about this case, why decrement if all ones and the input is zero. If we have any number and we add to it all ones, this is the number A, this is equivalent to a minus one decrement micro operation because all ones is the two's complement of one. If we have a register containing one, the two's complement of this value is one, 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 one. And adding A to the two's complement of one 
meaning a minus one. And the last case, if the carry in is one, then we have a transfer. If you add one to all ones, then you have all zeros here. So if carry in is one, and all the outputs of the max are ones, then this means a transfer micro operation. Here I have one stage of the previous circuit, so you can follow it again on zero, zero. If the carry in is zero, then this input is transferred to the output of the max, and this is BI added to the AI, which is the add. And if carry in is one, then add with carry, the second case. And on zero, one, here are the two cases, here is the output. Then we'll have AI or the complement of BI, which is subtract with borrow. Or if carry in is one, here the case, then the subtract operation, since we add A with the two's complement of B. And on one zero, here we have zero. If the carry in is zero, then we'll have a transfer operation. And if the carry in is one, then increment. And the last case, on one one, here we have one. So again, if the carry in is zero, then adding all ones to the number means decrement, since all ones is the ones complement of one. And if the carry in is one, then we have just a transfer. I will stop here today. On the next meeting, we'll continue with logic micro operations and shift micro operations. For today, that's all. Thank you.